Good morning, friends and family. Um, here we are. Fog so thick, cannot even see. <clears throat> Actually, I drove into this cloud. It looked like it was really crazy. This just a wall, and then you drive right into it. Um, anyways, we are just past. Either we are just getting ready to enter Cheyenne, or we are getting ready to pass Cheyenne. I don't know. The last time I saw Cheyenne is like 30 miles from Cheyenne. It's been a while. Um, anyway, so we ended up getting stuck in Laramie last night. Um, originally, when they had IAD closed, they had it um, slated to be closed. It was for winter weather. Um, and then later, when I was checking it before I went to bed, it wasn't winter weather that was causing it. It was, there was an accident, all lanes were blocked. Um, so this morning I woke up, uh, there's um, some caution about black ice, um, which I did go over that between some exits and I've already gone through that and cleared that area. Now it just says, be careful, there could be spots of black ice. Um, and then nothing was said about the fog, but the roads are fine at this point. Um, but, you know, with the fog this thick, you can't tell somebody stopped in the middle of the road. So I just choose to, um, you know, slow and steady. Uh, these super truckers are going through. They, uh, they have all this experience that fog, they have x-ray fog vision. Um, so anyways, uh, they've dropped the speed limit from 75 to 65. That's good. Uh, anyhow, so we were um, stuck at Laramie last night right after we fueled. Um, so Alex, I think, drove like maybe an hour or two hours before we, uh, we had to pull over and stop. Um, but we're back on track, uh, headed towards our drop. Um, according to navigation, we should be pulling about 8 p.m. So I would add an extra two hours to that just for uh, because of slow speeds like now, um, as well as, uh, you know, you just don't know what's happening. It looks like the roads are clear. Once we get out of Cheyenne into Nebraska, the roads are clear all the way. Uh, we're going up pretty close to Chicago. Um, and it looks like everything is pretty clear up that direction. Uh, so, you know, I think we'll be okay, but uh, just adding a couple of hours extra just to be safe. Um, so I would say we'll probably be there before before 11, I would say. That gives us three extra hours based on, uh, the, the GPS is, is going off of a, um, a 65 mile an hour um, limit. Like if we were to be 65 the whole way, that's what it's saying. Uh, I know that's not possible because going up and down mountains, um, sometimes we slow down to like 30 miles an hour. Um, if there's an accident, it slows us down usually into one lane and you're going like 10 miles in an hour. Um, so, you know, it all just depends. Um, anyhow, uh, the sun was coming up when uh, before I hit this fog patch, um, it was having a real nice uh, sunrise, and now it's just uh, the sun is illuminating the fog, <laughs> but you can't see the sunrise. So um, I welcome the sunlight; makes it easier to see, makes it uh, warms it up, so I burn off this fog. Anyhow. Um, I don't even think you can see me. No. So I'm not gonna mess with it. Uh, anyhow, so that's that's about it. Uh, not a lot going on. Uh, we don't have another load yet lined up. Um, Alex and I did talk last night. I know that we've been saying that we we're gonna go to um, to like Disney and Universal Studios next month, um, but with all this cold and with the I don't know with the 
freight slow or or what's causing us to take so long to get these runs but we decided that uh, we're gonna go ahead not this weekend but the next weekend and head to Florida and do our Universal Studios and um, then uh, so 26th I think is about the date we're gonna be in Florida uh, Orlando uh, do Universal Studios and, and take four days off uh, let this weather kind of chill the hell out uh, hopefully spring uh, will move in you know the, the hot temperatures don't bother me um, and yeah it's hot but uh, this cold stuff is for the birds um, in this industry uh, I didn't mind it living like in Alaska I was of course going to high school and, and well seven years in Alaska so sixth grade through high school um, but I didn't I didn't mind it uh, it was cold yeah but we learned to bundle and dress for it um, but for this industry it really bites because you have to watch your fuel certain temperatures you have to be careful not to gel you have to do additive um, the roads are hazardous in the winter you know when like during the day when it warms up and that snow starts to melt and then it gets colder at night and you start getting those black ice um, slicks across the road. Uh, yeah, it, it can be kind of crazy. Um, so, yeah, winter kind of sucks when it comes to this, but you know, it's part of the job. Um, we just take precautions. We go slow, uh, you know, something Alex and I both agree with is there is no freight that is um, so important that uh, to risk my life or others lives to get it there uh, and my company feels the same way uh, safety is is first priority and at any time that we don't feel safe uh, we can pull over and send in our, our message that we're pulled over due to whatever situation <coughs> and um, wait out until it's safe to do so. So um, doing that, is, I don't have that added pressure. And I think a lot of times these um, these trucks that are having all these accidents, they I think are owner operators and they're pushing for their money and they're pushing to get through. You know what? That extra 100, 200 bucks uh, is not worth, number one, you can't replace a life. Um, yeah, it looks like we're coming into Cheyenne, by the way. Uh, number two, um, that extra hundred bucks is going to cover your deductible if you have an accident. So you really end up putting yourself behind than if you just the turtle. The turtle wins the race, right? Not the hare. Um, just play it safe. Uh, do the right thing. Pull over when you need to pull over. Uh, it'll get there when it'll get there. Sometimes that's just what you got to do. Um, you know, you're not going to take advantage of it, but you make sure that, um, you know, you're safe. So, uh, and also I think some of these other companies that are really, they're pushing, and I think they're smaller carriers, and, and you know, if they don't get that freight moved, um, here's a sign, watch for black eyes. Um, if you don't get that freight moved, then they're not getting their money. Uh, also, if the freight's late, they could be getting penalized. I, I get it, really, I do. Um, I think some of these companies, when you have uh, storm events uh, or closures, I, mean, I don't see how they can penalize you. That's not something you do. Now, if I was the one involved in the accident, um, or it's something that I've done that is not safe or something I could see that but um, I don't know I don't know enough about this industry to really get into all those nuts and bolts but I would think that um, a customer as long as they were well informed uh, of the situations would be okay um, again this is just my thinking and, and being in the couple industries that I've been in before I've been into this industry see a 
a break in the fog. Uh, looks like just past Cheyenne. And it looks like it's gonna be a, a gorgeous day. Take care. I'm outie.